notes for everybody. Uh, Josh, come in. We'll do it here. Okay. Um, Tuesday. Most of you here, if not, you probably saw the uh, the video we put online on the Samsung refrigerator. How many thermistors was inside that refrigerator on Tuesday? Anybody have an idea how many thermistors we counted? Nine. Nine thermistors? We had two on the freezer evap. Oh, two on the refrigerator evap. We had one on the damper. We had one in the refrigerator compartment. Yes. We have one in the freezer compartment. Two in the freezer. Two in the freezer. One in the freezer, like in the ceiling. Yeah. Two on the evaporator. Yeah, and what else? That's seven. On oh, the ice maker had its thermistors too. Okay, uh, look at this diagram for this refrigerator. Um, it's this diagram here. I I'll zoom in on it, but take a minute and see how many thermistors are on this diagram. They call them sensors. So how many sensors do you see on this diagram? Touch screen's not working. Take a minute. How many sensors do you see on this diagram? No, it's a little hard to read. The first diagram I printed, you couldn't even see that one. This one at least was clearer. I got this off the service manual, so if any, any of you need it, I'll email you the service manual. One, two, I got two. See, two. We only have two in this refrigerator. What are they? EVAP sensor, the RC sensor. Okay, the RC sensor, and the other one says EVAP? Yes. Okay. Um, remember we talked about the Samsung, and we said that it had a damper in it. Now, most refrigerators when they have a damper, the damper is a vent. It's a window or a door. This, this is a damper here, okay? And it controls the airflow somewhere in the refrigerator. The one in the Samsung controlled the air from the refrigerator evaporator to the, um, the vegetable and, and crisper bins. That refrigerator had separate evaporators for the refrigerator and the freezer where most dampers, when you talk to somebody in, in the industry and ask you about dampers, they're going to tell you the damper, it goes between the refrigerator and the freezer. Because most refrigerators, all the cooling is done here in the freezer. Now, we've already opened this one up and took everything out. You've got the evaporator in here inside the freezer. All the cooling for this unit is done inside this freezer. So then how do we get the refrigerator side cold? We don't have an evaporator inside the refrigerator like that Samsung. How do we get the refrigerator cold? Through this damper. So right here in the top, and I'll just like stick a screwdriver or something through so you can see. I'll just, uh, something you can all see is... Now, if you guys over there can't see, just come over this way if you guys can't see. I'll, I'll try to move it a little bit. but um, So, from the freezer, there's an opening here. Can you guys see that? So, the air from the freezer goes into the refrigerator through this opening. This damper is mounted in the opening on the refrigerator side right here, like this. And it's controlling how fast that air goes into the refrigerator. Okay? Now, how does that work? If it controls how fast, why do I want to control how fast? Because once I get this refrigerator to 40 degrees or 36 degrees, I want it to shut off. So why control how fast the air comes in? Well, actuality... Oh, I can't get this piece out, and i got to pop the clips. Hold on. In that Samsung refrigerator, that damper was motorized. A motorized damper means there's like a little motor on the side, like a timer motor. And when one of these sensors tells the refrigerator, hey, the refrigerator's cold enough, the damper motor will close the window so that the air is not going into the refrigerator. But this don't have a motor. This, if you look here, and I'll just show you, 
this just slides back and forth and you can probably see it better on this side you can see like a little a little window opening and closing on there so you can get that on the camera can you see how it opens and closes there and i can see it on this side too so can you see that that damper how it works you can see it inside there better like this okay so this is a mechanical damper which the customer adjusts its setting sets it to one setting it never moves it doesn't open and close by itself it doesn't move so right above here look we have a little tiny thermistor okay this is sensing the temperature of the air in the refrigerator compartment okay so this is how the unit knows how cold the refrigerator is but if air comes in and this thing was completely sealed except for that opening we wouldn't cool the fridge why if if i if i just bring air in from this opening and that's the only opening I got. This fridge wouldn't cool. Does anybody know why? Circulate. You have to have a circulation, just like this room. Air conditioning. This is what we call supply. This is what comes into the room, cold air. Now, right above us, right here, is the return. This return has the filters up in there, and that's where the air in the room goes up in, goes over the, the, the coils, gets cold, and comes out these vents over here into the room. But if I block that vent, the return, I'm not going to get no supply. If I block the supply, the return's not going to pull the air. So this refrigerator has the supply through that damper. The return is located down here in the bottom. I don't know if I can stick a screw uh, uh, something through it, but let's just see. From the evaporator down here, there's an opening. You can see the pencil coming through on the bottom there. That's our return. So the cold air comes from the freezer into the fridge up here. Cold air falls, hot air rises. Cold air is going to come to the bottom and return back to the evaporator and circulate this way. But remember. We're using freezing cold air in our refrigerator. If I put too much of that air on this side, I will freeze it. Okay. So is this evaporator fan motor um, 120 volts or is it a low voltage fan motor? It's 120 volts. How did you know that? You'd have to trace the circuit. But this white wire is neutral. The power cord's right here. If I follow the white wire coming off that fan motor here and follow it down, it connects here and goes right to the power cord. If a component connects to the neutral in that refrigerator, it's 120 volts. If it's a component that just plugs into a computer board, and we have that board up here, if it just like the fan just had two wires plugging into the board, it might be low voltage. And most low voltage fans have three wires. They have a power and, and, and positive and negative low voltage, like 12 volts DC. And then the third one, they usually say VCC or whatever. And that is the communication from the board, which tells the fan to run faster or slower. This fan doesn't have a speed. So how do we control the two compartments? Well, the damper controls how fast the air comes in here. The thermistor tells the control board, hey, it's cold enough, shut the refrigerator off. But I got a problem now. If this thermistor is telling the refrigerator how cold the fridge side is and to shut off, how do I control my temperature in the freezer? How do I have, I got to have two separate compartments. My freezer is zero degrees. My fridge is running at 35, 40 degrees. How do I control two separate compartments? I'm sorry? Well, here's the thing. I have a thermistor here. I only have two thermistors, you guys said, right? This is the refrigerator compartment. What's the other one? On the evaporator. What do we say if we put the thermistor on the evaporator? It's for what? 
or the, the temperature or the, 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 the air flow? No, what cycles in the refrigerator besides the compressor? The defrost. The evaporator thermistor, the freezer thermistor, where is that one? I think it, this was, let's, let's point them out on the diagram. Okay, so our refrigerator uh, thermistor is, this one right here is the one that I have on the damper. Okay, my freezer thermistor, well, wait a minute. I'm sorry, this is the evaporator thermistor. This is my refrigerator thermistor. This one here, refrigerator compartment, RC, is the one I have on the damper. This one over here is on the evaporator. So it's controlling defrost. It's not controlling the temperature of my freezer. So this is old school technology. This has been that way ever since a refrigerator was built with a refrigerator and a freezer compartment. We used a mechanical thermostat. That refrigerator right there, the top and bottom unit, has a thermostat. When the refrigerator's cold, the whole thing shuts off. Well, how do we control the temperature in the freezer with that one? The damper. But wait a minute. The damper's controlling the air into the refrigerator. How is this controlling the freezer? It doesn't open and close. This here... Um, This piece right here connects to my little window that I showed you at slides, and the customer will slide this left or right. Now, if we look at the control assembly here, right here, and I'll show you, it says cold or coldest, and this piece sits in there like that. And you just slide it left or right, cold or coldest. But what's it saying? Cold or coldest for what? Does it say something? There? Freezer temperature. Cold or coldest is freezer temperature. So I'm sliding this back and forth, but I'm sliding the damper. So by, by sliding this back and forth, all I'm doing is opening and closing the window. Cold or colder. But this is allowing the air into the fridge but the control says, no, 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 I'm controlling the freezer with that damper. Anybody got an idea? How am I controlling the freezer with this? It's, a, it's stopping how much, or it, it controls how much air leaves the freezer compartment? Yes, but it doesn't explain how I'm controlling the temperature. Fan no, the fan's one speed, and the fan is running. Whenever the compressor's on, that fan's on. When the compressor's off, that fan's off. This is how they do that. And they even do it on this top and bottom here. If I set my temperature, I normally set my refrigerator temperature like on that mechanical. It only has one dial in the refrigerator. It has, it has a damper control in the freezer on that one too. But when I set this to colder, which is freezer on colder, not fridge, by closing the damper almost completely closed. It never closes 100%. And this is what happens. If I block up most of the opening from the air flowing from here to here, more air will continue to circulate here before this side tells the thermistor what temperature it is. So let's just say this is in here, right? And I set that refrigerator to 40 degrees. When that thermistor sees the temperature over here at 40, shutting the whole freezer down. Okay? But if I want the freezer colder, I close the damper so the air come over here takes longer to get to 40. This is going to get even colder. If I open the damper all the way up, the cold air from here is going to go real fast. My freezer is not going to be as cold. The only thing is, is I cannot exactly set a temperature like on the dual evaporator, we're able to set the freezer to zero, five, 10 degrees, five degrees below zero. And we set the refrigerator for 34, 36, 40 if we want. So we can control each compartment with that refrigerator. Yes, I can make this colder or warmer, but I cannot specifically say I want it exactly at zero degrees. There's no way to do that. 
I'm only controlling my refrigerator side, and whatever that is, this is going to be colder or warmer just by opening and closing the window and controlling the airflow in the unit. Any questions on that? It's a little hard to understand, but the damper is controlling it. The thermistor is just telling the board, hey, you know the control board is that big on this whole fridge? That's it? Well, you're used to guys seeing a lot bigger boards on these refrigerators. This is the entire refrigerator control board right here. Just that little board right in there. Look how small that board is. That's it. This controls the whole fridge, the compressor, the defrost, everything. It don't have a lot of moving parts in it. This is as basic refrigerator as you can get. So our defrost thermistor is located. Let me just... Located right here. This is just like the other thermistor. There's a little tiny wire with a little sensor on the end. It's got a little clip here just holding it in place. But this thermistor is the thermistor that's on the evaporator. This is the one that is telling the defrost control how warm it is back there and to turn the defrost heater off so we don't get it too hot. This is the same as a defrost thermostat or defrost bimetal. So that other refrigerator, we had eight or nine thermistors in there controlling defrost on both evaporators because they both don't defrost at the same time. The compressor control of different cooling compartments. Remember we said variable speed fans on those units. This unit doesn't have all that fancy stuff. This is a basic refrigerator. This is a simplified refrigerator. So this piece goes on here. Yesterday, or well not yesterday, but Tuesday when we talked about the Samsung, how many fuses did that Samsung refrigerator have? Remember how many fuses that Samsung refrigerator had? Two? Two? We had thermal fuses on the heater, but we also had inline fuses, and there were four of them. Why was there four fuses? There was two for each heater. Remember I said there's one on line one on the heater coming in and one on neutral the heater. So each, both sides of the heater had a fuse. And I said the polarity is wrong. We had a fuse on both sides. Well, this one has how many fuses? Look at the schematic. And how many fuses? Where are they? And what are they called? Thermal fuse? And where do you find that? Connected to what, sir? Defrost heater. Look right here. Here's our defrost heater. These two <laughs> look like switches, but there's the two thermal fuses. So those are thermal fuses. They're located on the heating element inside here. And they're in line right here inside this. I don't know if you can get the camera in there, but right here on this line, let me get this wire out of the way, you have these two white connectors and, they, and the thermal fuses are connected directly to the heater. Now, I don't know if you can change those fuses separate from changing the heater where the Samsung, the heater and the fuses were all one assembly. But this is a very simple machine. We have the evaporator here. We have airflow coming through for the freezer. We got the airflow within the refrigerator, and we only have two thermistors. There wasn't a lot for me to cover on, on this refrigerator. I'm not going to go over the whole diagram. I was going to do this one in the GE refrigerator. We'll do the GE fridge next week because that one's going to be a lot more complicated because that has a step valve. We're going to go through the system as well as the controls. But do, anybody have any questions on this? Because there's not a lot for me to talk about on this unit. No? Everybody understand it? Come on, Douglas. You're looking at it like something about it. I mean, you can't get any more simpler on this. We don't have dually vat. We don't have a step valve with dually vat. 
We don't even have, do we have a VCC compressor, like a variable speed compressor? How do you know that? Did you look at the schematic? Where's the compressor on this? No. That's a VCC compressor. How do I know that? How, how, how do I know just by, I, I looked at it. I haven't even really even looked at this diagram. I just, first time looking at this refrigerator. I look at it, I can tell you, VCC. First of all, what is VCC? Variable capacity compressor. It means that compressor has multiple speeds. You have a question? Okay. So that, that means most compressors have a relay and overload. You give them power, they run full speed. Turn the power off, they're off. That's it. A variable capacity compressor is on this unit, but how do I know it's a variable capacity compressor? How many windings are in that compressor right there? Three. Three. The drawing is an aggregate. The ground is not really touching that third one. So you got three windings. That's a VCC. Usually if it's a regular compressor, they'll show a relay and overload on there as well. So I'm going to have one of you guys confirm it by ohming the compressor out and tell me how many windings you got. But I see three separate windings and a regular compressor only has how many? And they're called what? Just like a dryer motor. What are they called? The two windings. Start and run. Start and run. Start and run. Sometimes I call it main instead of run. But it's start and run. That's it. They both get power to start the compressor. Once it's up to speed, which is that fast, they take the power away from the start winding. But a VCC compressor has three windings inside of it. And it's running off that board. I think that this box here, I don't know if it's a relay or it's an inverter board. We're going to have to check it out. But it doesn't look like an inverter. It may be a regular compressor now that I look at it. You know why I say that? Because I see the white wire neutral. And that white wire comes here and it goes up back to the power cord here. It comes here. Jumps off this plug, jumps off of here, and then that white, actually, it looks like white and black are connected together there. That doesn't make no sense. And it goes here back to the power cord. So, oh, you, you know what? That's why, because they're both black here, and black says smooth and rib. You guys know what that smooth and rib means on the power cord? Anybody seen that? On an appliance that has like the black cord, like this cord here, it's a little bit hard for you to see it, but you guys can come and look at it after I'm done. One of these two lines, the outer pla rubber or plastic, whatever it is, covered in insulation, is smooth. And the other side, you can actually see ribs or lines on it. That's the neutral, the ribbed or line power cord. So when you see the two lines, black smooth, black rib. This one here is actually neutral. It's not black. I, I didn't look at it close enough. So that's power coming in. So I see that the compressors directly to neutral line, they drew the compressor wrong. It shouldn't look like that. It should be a regular compressor. But how do I know this is not an inverter board? Anybody know how inverter board on a refrigerator works? It'd be what? There's no relay on a vertebra board, but I think this one has a relay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to retract what I said, and I'm wrong. Like I said, I haven't really looked at these refrigerators. I opened them up. But an inverter board on a, re on a refrigerator compressor usually has two wires, line one and neutral, but the inverter will have a second set of wires, the, the low-voltage wires. And those low-voltage wires would go back to the control board, and that's how the control board would control the speed of the compressor. So the inverter on most of these units that have a separate inverter board going to the compressor. On some of these refrigerators, like the LGs or whatever, 
the inverter is built to the main board. Even the Samsung, and I, I did a video a long time ago on computer boards and the Samsung refrigerator, and I showed you which part controlled the compressor. It was inverted, but instead of having a separate motor control board or inverter board, it was built onto the main board. Now this one here, if this was an inverter, I'd have red and white, which is 9-1 and neutral, 120, but I'll have an, a, a second plug going to this compressor. Okay, let me show you that in another refrigerator, just so you guys understand that. Um, take me a second to bring one up here. Well, longer in a second, but you guys got what I'm talking about. <laughs> We just get the diagram on this book here. Okay, we're going to have issues opening up this file here. There we go. Ooh, look at this diagram. Isn't this nice? Where's my compressor on here? Give me a second to find the compressor. This is for you guys that are they're supposed to be graduate, should be able to read this. I see it on there. I'm just trying to find it in the pictorial. Anybody see a compressor on here? Damper motor. Bottom where? Bottom right, I don't see it. Oh, here it is. Right there. Let me zoom in on it so you all can see that. So they're calling it a variable speed compressor, but look, this is our 120 volts coming in. This is our low voltage, C12 volt plus and minus. So the inverter has two plugs going to it. One is power. And that power goes to the inverter, and that inverter sends that power to the compressor. This low voltage goes to that board and tells the board, hey, run the compressor fast, slow the compressor down, turn the compressor off. This is running off the main board as a communication telling the inverter board what it wants the compressor to do. So if we go back to that Whirlpool one that we were just looking at, right here, we we'll only have one plug going there. So if we turn this around now, I need someone to take the back off. We don't do it while we're on video, but we'll check it out. And we'll probably find that that has a relay and overload on that compressor. So anybody got any questions on I know it's a short lecture today. Normally we go about an hour, but... Anybody have any questions? There's not much to this component. You know, you got a fans, compressor, and, and that's it. This is probably about as simple, just as simple as that top mount freezer. That's it. It's, it's a basic, basic refrigerator. The Samsung we did was a lot more complicated because of all those sensors. You need to know that they're there. You need to know what each one of them does. We only have two sensors in this entire fridge. That's it. All right, that's not it. Then uh, if there's no questions, then, then I'll let you guys go back to your shop projects. Um, Monday, I'd like to do the GE refrigerator, the top and bottom GE. Okay? All right, guys. No questions?